Hello, church family. We invite you to a new small group Bible study series called Alpha. Alpha is a series of sessions exploring the Christian faith, typically running over 11 weeks. Each week, we will look at different questions around faith and it is designed to create conversation. Pastor Ed will facilitate this class. The class will be on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. starting July the 14th. Sign up on the link below. Please take a look at this short video. Um, so my parents had attended Alpha previously previous to me going and I saw the impact that it had in their lives and um, they were just more open I guess like we never really talked about our faith I mean we did but it was like private like within our house and I feel like through Alpha my mom was and dad they were more outgoing they would like talk about it with other people other than just our you know close family friends I wanted what what they had just went through because I wanted to be more outgoing, you know, with my faith. So um, I got a friend to go with me, Cassidy Harper. We didn't know anybody else going with us, like no other girls in the small group. One of the, some of the first sessions, you know, I was really nervous to meet my small group leader, meet all the new girls, but they were all so welcoming. It was like, like our own little family, even though we had just met each other. It's been a couple weeks seeing each other for two hours. So I think through that um, eating time, we like were able to dive deeper because we actually knew each other. Before Alpha, I was I, I called myself a Christian. I told other people I was Christian, but I didn't understand what it meant to be a Christian. It showed me that it's okay not to just go along with what everyone else is doing. Originally, I was the person just dipping their toe in, like you know, getting a feel of it all. And I think through Alpha, I became, you know, under the water. <laughs> I was one with the water. <laughs> I want other girls um, to have this same experience as I did. Um, like, I don't know, just being, able, being more open, not just keeping your faith to yourself. I, why would I keep it to myself? Something so great. Trinity, we have some exciting news. There's a new resource you and your family can use called Ramsey Plus. Together, we'll learn the proven plan to handle money, budget what God has given us, and track our progress so we can live and give like God wants us to. Click on the link below and get signed up today. What would happen if the people of God started handling money God's ways? You work too hard to get to the end of your life and have nothing to show for it. This is my family's legacy that I'm talking about here. I've got to have a plan and be focused. That knowledge that you pass down to your kids, that is how you change a family tree. You change your life when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you have that moment where you say, I've had it! I'm not going to live like this anymore!
Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Help me sing it all. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. 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 Oh, come on and praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Help me sing it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord. With me. highest praise Hallelujah. oh come on and clap your hands with me 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 come on help me sing it clap your hands with me clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands. Clap your hands with clap me. Clap your hands wherever you may be. Clap your hands with me. Come on and give him the praise. Clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. Oh, clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. How The highest praise. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Help me sing it all. Dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Dance before the Lord. Give him all of the praise. Before the Lord, oh, dance before the Lord. Hallelujah! It's the highest praise. We say Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh! Good morning, church family. I'm so glad that you guys have joined us today for worship. It is truly a day the Lord has made, and I am like you. I am so glad that I am able to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, it's prayer time. It is time for us to offer our prayers and our petitions, as God said, to make them known unto him. And then he promises that he not only hears them, but he will answer them. Hey, if you have a prayer request or if you want to submit a prayer request for a family or friend, please do so in our comment section. 
please do so. And we will have persons who will be praying for you and for your prayer petition. Also, if at this moment you would like to receive individual private prayer, there is a button right there in the comment section. All you have to do is hit that button and you will be redirected into a prayer room where one of the pastors will be waiting for you to pray for you. Amen. We want to make sure that prayer 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 that changes things prayer that makes things happen is happening for you but at this moment if we could all center ourselves as we go to the lord in prayer lord we just thank you god for this day lord it is truly an awesome day because it is a day that you have declared it is the day god that you have molded and shaped god it is the day god that you have allowed us to taste and see that you are good god it's another day god that you blew your life into us and awakened us god to the morning sun awakened us god to the glory of who you are and who we are to you and so, Father, we just thank you. We declare, God, that your kingdom shall come, not only as it is in heaven, but even here on earth, that your will will be done, God, not only in our individual lives, but, Lord, in the lives of the community of faith, in the lives and the communities in which we live, in the cities, in the states, and in our nation and in our world, God. Let your word that you watch over to perform, God, Lord, let it not return void but let it accomplish God everything that we send it to accomplish in the mighty name of Jesus God I thank you that you are a God who does not turn a deaf ear to us but God you said that you are attentive to me listening to our cry God that you search the heavens and high God looking God for your children I thank you God that we are called unto you we are beckoned unto you God in the name of Jesus as dearly beloved children God we thank you for this opportunity God to come unto you to come confidently unto you to come boldly before you God and to make our request known unto you so so God, we thank you for searching the deep, deep things of our mind and our thoughts, God. The deep angst that we have, God. The things that keep us up at night, God. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you are taking those things, God. And you are making those crooked places straight in our lives, God. And you are making them all work together for our good in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for being our wonderful counselor, our prince of peace, our mighty God, truly the great I am. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Turn with me to 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Verses 20 through 22. That's First Samuel, the 17th chapter, verses 20 through 22. So David arose in the early in the morning and left the flock with the keeper and took the supplies and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the circle of the camp while the army was going out in battle array, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up in battle array army against army. Then David left his baggage in care of the baggage keeper and ran to the battle line and entered in order to greet his brothers. This is the word of God for the people of God. May the people of God say thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather around your word today. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit lead us into a fresh encounter with your word so that we can experience a life transformation, so we can align with your word as we do the things that you have commanded us to do. God, we ask this in a name that's above all names. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a spot where God desires us to reach, a spot that can release the gifts, the purposes, and the plans that God has placed inside of us. There's a spot where we can't just seem to understand or wrap our minds around because at that spot, things just don't add up with human rationale. You see, when we are in our spot, things make sense. Things are based on what we can do. 
things are based on what we can manipulate, what we can control, what we can dictate. But when you're at that spot, that anointed spot, that appointed spot, it's not about us. It's about what God can do. You see, at that spot, it's about God's calculation. At that spot, it's about God's occupation. At that spot, it's about God's transformation. At that spot, it's based on God's promises. At that spot, it's based on God's decision. At that spot, it's based on God's power. See, at that spot, it's based on God's abundance. It's it's based on God's overflow. It's based on God's authority. See, it's about that spot. Do we want to stay where we are, or do we want to get to that spot? You see, that spot is the place where God created us since the beginning. God created that space, that time, that location so that we can thrive at that spot. That spot is the place where God and God alone can take us. Before we were born, God tailor-made us to be able to function at that spot, to serve him at that spot, to leave a legacy at that spot, to function at that spot, to love at that spot, to create at that spot, to forgive at that spot, to achieve at that spot. That spot is the place that makes a a true teacher teach, a true actor act, true preachers preach. See, it's at that spot where a true designer designs, a true fisherman fish, a true dancer dance, a true writer write. See, at that spot is where singers learn how to sing. It is the spot that God has created Just for them, I truly believe that Dr. Martin Luther King was created for that spot so that he could march. Mother Teresa was able to function and serve at that spot. Billy Graham and T.D. Jakes can preach at that spot. Nelson Mandela and Barack Obama could lead at that spot. And Simone Biles, Bills can, can flip at that spot. See, something deep, deep inside of us hungers for the spot. And when we are at the spot, at that moment, at that understanding, at that crossroad, in our life, there is no better place for us. Our future looks bright at that spot. Obstacles appear small at that spot. Trouble seems temporary at that spot. Love overflows at that spot. There is a spot where God's destination is awaiting for us, God's desire for us to encounter him at that spot. See, last week, we talked about the spot where David faced Goliath. When we, we zoomed in the fact that David defeated the Goliath at that spot, but There were spots before he reached that destination. See, David had to deal with some giants before he faced Goliath the giant. David had to go through some stuff before he got to that spot. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Before he functioned at the spot, he had to get through and get to the spot. David had to defeat Goliath before he faced Goliath, much like we have to defeat the the self-esteem Goliath. We have to defeat the education Goliath. We have to defeat the financial Goliaths. We have to defeat the emotional Goliath. See, there are some spiritual giants, some physical giants, some relational giants. We are battling a COVID-19 giant. At the same time, we're fighting a systematic racism giant. See, before David got to the spot, He had to deal with some things on the backside of the mountain. David learned about obedience, trust, and endurance on the backside of a mountain. Then then, then one day, then one day, he was obedient to his father. One day, he was obedient to carry out a meaningless task. And while doing that, he heard a war cry. And something clicked 
inside of him. So, so, so something click. I, I, I don't know. So many people have, who have accomplished great things for God. Talk about the moment when something clicked, when something changed. It, w- it was like something shifted into a higher gear. It was that moment when they pressed through, when they broke through, the, the moment where, when everything was clear, something clicked inside of David. That moment, that moment when he approached the spot. David was not in fear. David was not full of fear. David was not immobilized by fear. As he approached the spot, he he raised questions about the spot. And he did not allow his past shortcomings to limit him from the spot. I believe there's a few lessons that we can learn from David, and David can teach us as he reached for his spot on the battlefield. The first one is, if you look at 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 21, it says, Israel and the Philistines were drawing up. They were facing each other. They were drawing up the battle lines, army against army. The, the battle lines were were drawn up. I don't know if you ever witnessed a battle line. Uh, I remember visiting the uh, Korean DMZ, and it's a demilitarized zone uh, between North Korea and South Korea. Uh, 24 hours a day, uh, military stand ready. They are on post, ready to attack one another. And and the the slightest infraction could spark a battle. Every day they are standing right in front of each other, ready to go to battle. I don't know if you've ever seen a battle line. I'm not talking about just the the Crips and the Bloods or the Republicans and the Democrats and, and all the other things that's going on. See, every day we are witnessing battle lines. They are being drawn up. We can't turn on the news without seeing some, somebody who's good being attacked by someone who's evil. We can't turn on the radio without hearing how innocence is being attacked by something other than, something corrupted. Uh, we can't peruse the internet without being bombarded with the war that is going on all around the world. Corrupted mindsets, corrupted beliefs, corrupted ideologies. Sooner or later, we will be faced with the choice. You will either have to choose what side are you going to be on. Why? Because the battle lines have been drawn. I I remember in Joshua, uh, before he was entering into the promised land, uh, there was a, a need to, to discern who was going to step into the new reality that they were f- facing. And the scripture says in Joshua 24th chapter, verse 14, but if you're serving the Lord it seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. See, it's those moments when we have to declare who we will serve. It's those moments when we have to choose whose side that we're going to be on. When we face the battles that's in front of us, and hear me, there's battles going on for your health, battles for your marriage, battles for your future, battles for your finances, battles for your family, your business, your community, your church. There's battle lines being drawn, and there's a need for us to choose. Seeing the battle line, seeing the battle line, David, Move steadfast to seize the moment. Scripture says in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, verse 22, David left his baggage in care of the baggage keeper. 
take notice, take notice that before David reached the spot, before David reached the spot, David reached the battlefield. Before he could get to the battlefield, he needed to go through a process. He needed to go through something before he in, engaged in war. He needed to leave his baggage. Somebody say, leave your baggage behind. See, baggage is usually issues from our past. I got issues. You got issues. All God's children got issues. But how we deal with our past issues impacts the baggage that we're carrying around. You are not your baggage. You have destiny inside of you. You're not the, the, sum, uh, the, 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 the sum nation of all of your past issues that's limiting you from behind. You have destiny inside of you. I don't know if you ever travel with someone on a trip, if you're family, friends, and uh, both of you are, 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 are going the same amount of days, but when you compare baggage, one person has two to three times more bags than you have. You can't always tell a difference. You can always tell a difference between an experienced traveler and someone who doesn't know how to travel as well. Why? Because they are carrying so much baggage. I, 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 I'm saying amen to myself and ouch man to myself because I know I pack too much. Uh, see, too many people travel through life with a whole bunch of emotional baggage. They, they allow the things that hurt them in the past. They haven't unpacked the stuff from the past. They have not sorted through all those things that, that what is needed and what's not needed. See, sometimes you have to know what you are going toward so you can know what is needed for the future because there's some things that you need to leave behind. See, traveling light is about finding your priorities, carrying the essentials, and most importantly, giving forgiveness, granting forgiveness for those who you need to grant forgiveness to. See, it's important that we know how to pack for the road that we are traveling for. If we're going to get to that spot, if we're going to get to that spot where God is going to use us, we must understand that we cannot go back and make a brand new start, but we can start from now and make a brand new ending. See, we, we couldn't control all the things that's dealing with COVID-19, that's dealing with all the things that's going on uh, with uh, the systemic racism. We can't, we can't reconcile all of that. Some of us have to make sure we have the wherewithal to focus on what's in front of us. See, our past mistakes will have real consequences that we must address. The past hurt must, must, leaves us with pain that we must process. Our past has some things that sometimes slows us down, but when we deal with them, we have the opportunity to synchronize them, put them in places where we can be more effective. But when we don't deal with them, it weighs on us. Unresolved issues are the heaviest stuff that we deal with. Some of us know that there are some folk who have some unresolved issues weigh the whole room down. See, if you live in the past, you would die in the past. Life is happening right now. So live now. Move toward your future now. Advance toward possibility now. Remember yesterday is history. And tomorrow is a mystery. And today is a gift called the present. So let's make sure we make the most of the present. Tomorrow will be history. It's so important. That's why Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 18 and 19, read it with me. It says, do not earnestly remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you perceive it? And now 
it will and will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, in rivers, in the desert. See, I believe that we have to take heed to it. We have to make room for it. In order to make room for the new thing, you have to leave the baggage behind. See, David dealt with his past, and he was able to advanced to the new thing that was in front of him, and he gave the baggage to the baggage keeper. Come on, y'all. We need to give the bag to the baggage keepers. Yeah, you know, we, let's just give it to the baggage keepers. And, and, and the, the next thing is David showed up. See, there's power in showing up. There, this is a season where many people have graduated, they have accomplished some things. We celebrated our graduates a couple of weeks ago. Family and friends are, are supporting one another in different ways. And, and, and some of us remember when we would take the time to see our loved ones make the transition to the next level. We, we would take the time to be there. We, we would bring balloons. We, we would, would, would make we would, would do all type of things to, to make the most of that moment. We, we believe that being there accentuates the experience for the graduate. In fact, when people show up, it makes a difference. It doesn't matter where. When people show up for exercise, to exercise with you, our health changes. When parents shows up at school, the grades change of their children. When families show up for patients, the health care changes. When fans show up for teams, the team's performance change. When you show up for church, the atmosphere changes. See, there's power in showing up. Even in the midst of this pandemic that we find ourselves in, we must show up. Showing up on this online platform makes a dif difference. Showing up for, for Zoom Bible study makes a difference. Showing up for, for prayer makes a difference. Showing up for small group meetings makes a difference. We must show up. We can't allow the enemy to stop us from showing up. We can't allow our inability to deal with technology limit us. We have to figure it out. We have to press through it. David had to show up. He had to show up. Why? Because his father directed him to. David showed up in that on that morning. And it's important to know David continuously showed up on those mornings. See, when David would get the assignment, go take care of the sheep, go cook this meal, go, go do this, he showed up. And it's no wonder he writes in Psalms, the 53rd, fifth, the fifth chapter of the third verse, it says, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I show up. I lay my request before you, and I wait expectantly. That's why we have to show up. That's why we can't allow the enemy to fool us to believe that we are not difference makers, that everybody can go on without us, that we are not influencers, because if he can influence you not to show up, he can influence you where you will show up to. He can't control your future if you decide that you're going to show up where the Lord wants you to show up. I, I shared with you before uh, my daughter uh, had a, a time when she calculated that she wanted me to take her somewhere. She wanted me to take her to... Um, to Fiesta, Texas, and, and I thought I could, you know, make her forget about it. it uh, try to Every time she would bring it up, I will try to change the subject. And as the weeks went by, I thought she would forget. And I was certain as the month was passing by, I just knew it was over. And, and so I wasn't going to say anything about it. So I made... Yes, I made a promise that I was going to take her, but as time went by, I thought she would forget about it. But one day, 
she stood up flat footed in front of me. It didn't matter what was going on. She stood there and began to call those things that be not as if they were were. She began to walk by faith and not by sight. She began to approach her father with boldness and authority in the midst of a hectic week. I was facing a bout of exhaustion, needing a day off like some grass, needing some water in the middle of the summer. After preaching my heart out on Sunday, going to a meeting after church, going to a hospital after a meeting, I was walking into the house and Aaliyah stood there waiting for me. And she told me that I promised to take her to Fiesta, Texas. I, I didn't answer her right away, and I attempted to change the subject, but she didn't let me go. She stood right in front of me and spoke to the heart of the matter. And she said, you said you would take me to Fiesta, Texas on your day off. Aaliyah showed up, and guess what happened? That next morning, I didn't have a choice. I got up, I got in my car, I drove my baby to Fiesta, Texas. I was tired, but I went to Fiesta, Texas. Why? Because I gave my word. Anybody in here can relate. I, I want to make sure when we promise our children something, and they remind us, we have to back it up by any means necessary. Even when we may forget the promise, our children reminds us and we will come through. Why? Because it's our children. Now, if we step up to the plate, just imagine how God does when we step up to the plate and remind him of our promises. See, see, Lord, the bank account says this, but you said everything is Possible with you. Lord, I feel lost right now. Lord, but you said you will direct my path. Lord, I'm in the midst of a storm. Lord, but I know you said you will give us perfect peace. I know I may feel cursed, Lord, but you said that I cannot be cursed, that I am blessed. Lord, I may be experiencing some sickness, but Lord, you said. I will have long life in you will satisfy me. Lord, I may be short right now, but you said you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. See, we have to stand on the promises. We have to remind ourselves and bring it to the Lord because he will remember us. Lord, you said that I am not the head, that I am the head and not the tail, that I'm above and not belief. So I believe you will position me in this company, in this pandemic in this time for your purposes. Lord, you said that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. So sickness will flee from my body in the name of Jesus. Lord, you said that you came that I may enjoy life and have it to the full, to the overflow. I believe, Lord, that I'm moving toward the full in the overflow. And you said that you will have, a, you will put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise. Lord, I give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Why? Because you said so. As children, I believe we have the power. To show up, to show up. And when we show up, just show up. I believe if you keep on showing up, I believe God will position you in the spot where God desires for you to be. And I believe he will transform your heart, your mind, and your body, your family, your community. I believe that in the name that's above all names. I trust it and believe it. I pray that you receive this word today. And if you are one who have not uh, asked for the Lord to guide you in these moments, to, to, to move you to a point where you can show up, you cannot show up without him. It's so important that we show up with the Lord. 
if you never invited the Lord to step into your life, I invite you to do that right now. I believe by faith, you inviting the Lord in can change your circumstances forevermore. If, if you are without a church home, I want to encourage you to, to commit. Just touch that connect form that's right in front of you. We want to make sure that we, we connect you to the body of Christ. If you're a guest, I want to make sure you fill out that form. If you desire to join a church, please fill that out, out that form. We want you to go deeper into the Lord. We trust you and believe that you are advancing in this season. I pray for you on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, church family. We invite you to a new small group Bible study series called Alpha. Alpha is a series of sessions exploring the Christian faith, typically running over 11 weeks. Each week, we will look at different questions around faith and it is designed to create conversation. Pastor Ed will facilitate this class. The class will be on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. starting July the 14th. Sign up on the link below. Please take a look at this short video. Um, so my parents had attended Alpha previously previous to me going and I saw the impact that it had in their lives and um, they were just more open I guess like we never really talked about our faith I mean we did but it was like private like within our house and I feel like through Alpha my mom was and dad they were more outgoing they would like talk about it with other people other than just our you know close family friends I wanted what what they had just went through because I wanted to be more outgoing you know, with my faith. So um, I got a friend to go with me, Cassidy Harper. We didn't know anybody else going with us, like no other girls in the small group. One of the, some of the first sessions, you know, I was really nervous to meet my small group leader, meet all the new girls, but they were all so welcoming. It was like, like our own little family, even though we had just met each other. It's been a couple weeks seeing each other for two hours. So I think through that um, eating time, we like, were able to dive deeper because we actually knew each other. Before Alpha, I, was, I, I called myself a Christian. I told other people I was Christian, but I didn't understand what it meant to be a Christian. It showed me that it's okay not to just go along with what everyone else is doing. Originally, I was the person just dipping their toe in, like, you know, getting a feel of it all. And I think through Alpha, I became, you know, under the water. <laughs> I was one with the water. <laughs> I want other girls um, to have this same experience as I did. Um, like, I don't know, just being, able, being more open, not just keeping your faith to yourself. I, why would I keep it to myself? Something so great. Trinity, we have some exciting news. There's a new resource you and your family can use called Ramsey Plus. Together, we'll learn the proven plan to handle money, budget what God has given us, and track our progress so we can live and give like God wants us to. Click on the link below and get signed up today. What would happen if the people of God started handling money God's ways? You work too hard to get to the end of your life and have nothing to show for it. This is my family's legacy that I'm talking about here. I've got to have a plan and be focused. That knowledge that you pass down to your kids, that is how you change a family tree. You change your life when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you have that moment where you say, I've had it. 
I am not going to live like this anymore. We are grateful for the generosity and the faithfulness of our church family. You are intentionally ensuring that your tithes and offerings are received to empower the church to continue to grow. Please use one of the six ways to give here at Trinity. If you desire to give now, you'll see a link below.